In this episode, we're going to talk about botnets, the basic definitions of what is a botnet, the types of devices impacted, why botnet attacks are so powerful, the types of crimes committed by these bot networks, some of the economics and impact to end users, and three of the, the larger botnet attacks that have happened over the last several years. At a very high level, a botnet is a type of malware. It's a network of infected computers hidden by the botnet malware. If we dig a little bit deeper, so let's look at what is a bot. Well, a bot is an infected machine, and this can be a, a desktop, a laptop, a mobile device. A botnet itself is a network of endpoints infected by a single piece of malware that grants someone other than the owner of that device control of the resources. And when I talk about resources, I'm talking about CPU, memory, command lines, and the underlying data that's stored on those devices. A herder slash botmaster is a term used for the owner of the actual botnet. And the term command and control, or C2, is a group of bots in the botnet that will check into a server or group of servers to receive commands and updates. This is really the defining module in the bot network since it coordinates any and all attacks. Peer-to-peer -peer network have been known to exist, but most botnets follow a command and control paradigm. So what devices can be part of a bot network? Well, really any, uh, PCs, Macs, tablets, or smartphones. And wh why are bot networks so powerful and we have to be so concerned about them? Well, the true power comes from the collection of endpoints that make up the bot network. The more endpoints, the more powerful they are. They're extremely anonymous and hard to track down and, and shut down, and they can quickly evolve over time through the use of these command and control servers that can, that can be updated to issue new commands in order to basically evolve the attack over time. Botnet owners can have access to several thousand computers at a time and command them to carry out malicious activities. Cyber criminals initially gain access to these devices by using Trojan viruses to attack computers, security systems before implementing the command and control software to enable them to carry out the malicious activity on a large scale. These activities can be automated to encourage as many simultaneous attacks as possible. Different type of botnet attacks um, can exist. It's not just the one size fits all. There's different flavors of these bot networks and the primary reason they exist. So what type of crimes are committed uh, with these bot networks? Well, there's five major types of, of criminal activity that can happen. One is uh, distributed denial of service attacks. These are probably the most famous since it involves a lot of the bigger botnecks that, that do the most damage and get the most press, you know, because they have been known to attack large companies such as Twitter, Netflix, and CNN. The C2 service issue commands to hit the same IP over and over again, which can often create slow logins, slow performance, or can actually completely take down the system. They can be used to spread malware. They can be used for online fraud to create spamming and or phishing campaigns. What's the economics behind this? So this is really fascinating part of, of bot networks and kind of how, how they're, they're different. The herder, as we talked about earlier, the one who kind of controls and owns the bot network, can treat the bot network that he sets up as, as a piece of real estate. So think of it as a, an apartment owner and you have these different apartments that you can rent out. The criminals will rent out a part of, part of the bot network, whether it be you know 20%, 40%, 50% of the resources to anyone who wants to lease it at a certain price. Criminals can rent or buy currently established networks to execute these campaigns. And they basically get what amounts to a managed criminal service. Botnet paper installation services uh, to set up the network 
can be brought up on the dark web for a fixed fee of anywhere from two to 10 cents per device for installing the malware. So for as, as little as just cents on the dollar per device, you can set up a, a bot network attack. What are the propagation methods um, that are used for distribution of these type of attacks? Well, there's five. One is through spam or email, two is through worms, three is through social networks, four is through removable devices, and five is through malicious websites. So what's the impact to the end user? Well, you can see performance degradation for either your own device or devices you're in, in services you're trying to log into that are currently under a, bot, a botnet attack. Stolen personal data, which can be used for blackmail or identity theft. And legal implications if your computer executes an attack. Now, generally, you know, over time, it you probably will be cleared of any charges, but if you have a large, you know, computer system and your computer system is infiltrated and used for attacks on other companies, uh, that could be that could be a liability issue for you if, if you run a small business. Next, I want to discuss three of the larger botnet attacks that have, have happened over the last few years. The first one is 3VE. Uh, 3VE is considered the most advanced click fraud botnet uh, assembled to date. It operated from 2013 to 2018 uh, when it was dismantled by international law enforcement uh, along with the help of Google and cybersecurity firm White Ops. Uh, three operators created fake websites where they loaded ads and then used the bots to click on ads and generate profits. So this is a very common technique. At one point, the botnet is believed to have compromised more than 1.5 million home computers and 1,900 servers clicking on ads loaded on more than 10,000 fake websites. The next one is Bashlight. Uh, Bashlight, also known under various names as uh, uh, Qbot, Torless, Lizard Stressor, is a malware strain designed to infect poorly secured Wi-Fi home routers, smart devices, and Linux servers. Its primarily and only role is to carry out DDoS attacks. Uh, the malware was created in 2000, uh, I'm sorry, in 2014, excuse me, by members of the Lizard Squad hacking group. And it's, this code actually was leaked online in 2015. And interesting enough, this is what makes it one of the more powerful attacks um, because it really laid a blueprint down that others have copied. Uh, and so due to this leak, uh, the malware has often been used multiple times to host many of today's uh, DDoS attack botnets and is often the second most popular IoT malware strain behind Myria. The last one I want to discuss is Neckers. Uh, Neckers is a spam botnet uh, that was first seen in 2012 and is believed to have been created by the same crew that ran the Drydox banking trojan. Uh, the botnet's sole purpose is to infect Windows computers and then use them to send spam email. And it does this very, very effectively. Uh, across its lifetime, the botnet has been sending spam for all sorts of various schemes. So maybe some of these you've run across, I'm sure you have, and chances are um, it was due to this, this specific botnet. So some of the schemes you may have run across are Viagra and Pharma spam, uh, Miracle Cures, dating site spam, stock and crypto pump and dump schemes, um, mal malware spam spreading other malware, such as the Drydox banking trojan, uh, the Locky ransomware, or the BART ransomware. Uh, the botnet reached its peak in 2016 to 2017, when it could be found on around six to seven million devices on a monthly basis. Um, this botnet is still alive today, unlike the other two, which were shut down, but its activity is not as uh, prolific as it was a few years ago. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, and provide comments.